Hello, I'm Dr. Eva Zingone. Welcome back to The Knowledge Well. Today, we're talking about chiropractic care before and after pregnancy. And I really think this topic is so important because we spend so much energy and time talking about preparing for birth as if it's this singular event and then it happens and then it's like, now what? There's no support to carry us through the postpartum period or challenges that we may have had prior to becoming pregnant. I think when we have this big pregnant belly, it's really obvious. There's this outward show of what we're going through to a certain extent. People give us special treatment. They're opening doors for us. Whereas if we're struggling to conceive and we haven't shared that with our friends or family members, it's something that we're going through all alone. And on the flip side, after we have our baby, all of a sudden baby's at the forefront and moms put to the back burner. We simply do not value self-care in the same way that we value self-care for pregnant moms. Your partner may be all about you going to get that prenatal massage and getting your mommy time when you got the belly, but once it's not there, are you still entitled to that same support system? Well, I'm hoping to change all of that and to give more support to birthing people before and after pregnancy because we just need it and it's time. So that's what we're talking about today. If you caught part one of this video series, you got my whole background, but a little refresher, I'm a certified perinatal and pediatric chiropractor. I practice in San Diego with my husband, who's also a chiropractor. I am also donor trained as a doula. I am a certified breastfeeding specialist and I am mom to an eight month old Rocco. So I'm also in this postpartum season for those of you that are in that time of life with me. Today, we're going to talk about chiropractic care before pregnancy, how it can benefit someone that's looking to conceive. We're going to talk about how it is a crucial part of supporting a mom after she's given birth and supporting really the whole family unit. And then I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks on how you can support your nervous system and your overall health from home for free, whether or not you have access to a chiropractor in this season of life, these are going to be things that you can do regardless. Now, I like to say pregnancy is a byproduct of good health. And I say this not to minimize or oversimplify the struggle if you've been having challenges conceiving, but rather I say this to contextualize pregnancy in the overall scheme of someone's health, right? We have to keep it in context of someone's overall health. Just like if we were to want to grow a strawberry, we've got to look into all the different things that a strawberry plant needs to create the fertile conditions for the strawberry plant, not only to grow, but to thrive and be really tasty and juicy and delicious. We've got to consider the soil quality. We've got to consider all of those minerals and nutrients. We've got to consider where we're growing the plant. Are we in a climate where strawberries tend to do well? Are we giving it just the right amount of rainfall and sunlight. Our bodies are like plants in the sense that they are incredibly complex. No two plants have the exact same needs, right? Different fruits, different species, different flowers. They like differing amounts of sunlight. They need different ratios of nutrients. And our bodies are the same way. There's no one size fits all here's the kit, here's the package, now you can grow any plant, right? Our, our individual needs are varied. Now, of course, plants can grow randomly. You've got berries that grow on the side of the freeway. Um, sometimes pregnancy happens really easily for people. Sometimes it happens by accident. But ultimately, there's really no shortcut when it comes to our overall health. And even if you got pregnant really easily, you didn't have to spend a lot of time troubleshooting or investigating your overall health. It doesn't mean that it's not important. And it doesn't mean that any underlying imbalances in your body are not going to emerge for you in the postpartum period, because everything is interconnected in that way. I think with fertility in particular, we are promised a lot of silver bullets, a lot of easy shortcuts. And unfortunately, that's just not the way that our body is designed. There are no shortcuts when it comes to our health. We have to consider the whole picture. If you have an opportunity to, if you have the gift of time prior to conception, I like to advise couples to give themselves six months to a year minimum of trying to create these fertile conditions to optimize the likelihood of 
carrying a healthy pregnancy to term. And by the way, it's not just about mom and her health. It is also about dad. It takes two partners to create a baby. And we need to consider the overall health prior to conception of both partners, if that is indeed the arrangement. So if we're thinking about this strawberry plant that we are trying to grow and all the things that go into a healthy strawberry plant, but we can do all this stuff all day long and none of it's going to matter if we don't have a power supply. We need the sunlight to fuel this entire process. The sunlight in our body is like our nervous system because the grand regulator of all of our bodily processes is our brain. And the brain sends signals out to every single part of our body through our nervous system. So you can look at the yellow portion of this image, our brain, our brainstem, our spinal cord. You can see that this is all housed directly inside of our spinal column. So this is why chiropractors work with your spine, because anytime we adjust your spine, we are influencing your nervous system and therefore your body's ability to respond to stress, your body's overall regulation of body chemistry. We want to make sure that the system is functioning as well as it possibly can at all seasons of life, but especially especially when we're trying to get pregnant because this system runs extremely efficiently. Our bodies are so intelligent. Let's consider the following example. Um, pretend you are a cave person or maybe you're just on safari and you're in the jungle and you see a giant tiger making its way towards you. Your body is going to instantaneously do everything it can to get you out of the line of sight from the tiger and get you to safety. It is going to increase your heart rate and your breathing, get the cardiovascular response going so you can jet the heck out of there. Your body does not care about digestion, digesting whatever it is you ate for breakfast. That's not a priority right now. It's not going to be focused on growing tiny fingernails and tiny toenails, growth of a baby at this time. It's not a time where your body would be able to birth. If you were giving birth and you encountered a tiger, your entire body would be like, oh, Hold that thought. We're going to shut this down until we find someplace more safe. Now, the interesting thing about our brain and about our nervous system is that our brain doesn't necessarily recognize the difference between an actual threat and a perceived threat. So it doesn't know if there's literally a tiger in the room or if you're just crazy stressed with work and with other kids and you're fighting with your spouse, you've got tension in your relationship, you've got financial issues, that can initiate the same chemical cascade of events as if you were running from a bear. Your body is going to start releasing stress hormones. It's not going to care about things like digestion and cellular repair and immune function. Those things are going to take a back seat to your body doing whatever it needs to do to survive. Now, stress in our lives is cumulative and it builds up over time. In a perfect world, we'd be exposed to stress and our body, our nervous system would be able to process it, clear it out, integrate it, and just move on. But oftentimes we don't give ourselves the time or the space, or we don't have the tools and strategies to efficiently process stress. And instead it just builds up and starts to starts to bog us down. I use the analogy of like a water bucket, stress coming in, starting by the way, from birth and childhood. It's one of the reasons we take care of kids. It's our whole lives long that stress comes in like water filling a bucket. And if we're not regularly having a way of clearing that stress out, dumping water out of the bucket, it's just going to build up, up and up and up. And eventually the, the bucket is going to be running over with water because it's filled to the brim. And then any additional stress that comes in, any additional water has nowhere else to go. So it spills over. Usually when we're at that point, our body's like, all right, the immune system's got to go. We're getting sick all the time. Our energy levels are poor. We're just like having all these issues because our body is, it's maxed out. It's tapped out. Now, when we are looking at the preconception period and we're thinking about wanting to have a baby, we need to have a lot of space in our bucket so that our body can take on the challenge and the energy required to grow a baby and then to heal postpartum and then to raise that baby and enter into parenthood for the first, second, third time, et cetera, takes a lot of energy expenditure. So if you're coming into the season of life with a really full bucket, not only is it going to be hard for your body to just take on the challenge of conception, but once you conceive, you want to make sure that there is some bandwidth to do everything else that your body needs to do in a sustainable manner. 
as chiropractors, every time we do an adjustment, it's kind of like we're poking a hole in this water bucket and we're allowing some of that water to simply drain out, giving you more space to adapt to the stressors of life. It's as simple as that. Moms that have sought out our care while they are trying to conceive have shared very commonly that they are able to sleep better. They're feeling less anxious. They just feel like they have more bandwidth to tackle some of these stressors when they are getting regular chiropractic care and they are tending to the health of their nervous system. All right, I would like to transition now and talk about after giving birth. Let's talk about postpartum. I don't even know where the six week thing came from, but we have this crazy expectation in our society where at the six week mark, we are gonna go see our care provider and we are gonna be cleared for all the activities that we were able to enjoy prior to pregnancy. We ought to be able to resume exercise, intercourse, return to work. We often talk about the fourth trimester. Maybe you've heard this term, but it's this idea that the first three months after giving birth are really like an extension of your pregnancy in the sense that you and baby are so physiologically connected still. And humans are born less mature than other mammals, that other mammals might be able to walk shortly after being born. Human babies are extremely reliant on us for nurturing, for protection, for warmth. They rely on us to regulate their nervous system. So it is incredibly demanding for mom and mom and baby are both very much going through it still at the six week mark. I prefer to say, hey, nine months in, nine months out. It took nine months for your body to undergo all of the changes necessary for you to grow this baby and bring them into the world. It sure as heck is going to take at least nine months on the other end for you to start to heal and recover and approach some sense of normalcy. So I like to just address this gap in our expectation because I think it's the fact that we expect to be good to go by six weeks and then we're not. It's the gap between the expectation and the reality that makes us feel like we're failing or makes us feel like we're not good enough when really we're exactly where we need to be. You're trying to physically heal either from your body being torn open to a major abdominal surgery, all while you are trying to keep this tiny human alive. And then emotionally and chemically, we deal with one of the biggest hormonal shifts that happens in our entire lifespan. And that hormonal crash postpartum takes a huge toll on us emotionally, and it takes a lot of energy expenditure from the body to recalibrate from all of those changes that are happening so rapidly. Again, all while you are dealing with extreme lack of sleep and just your entire world being transformed, a transformation of your identity and a death of really who you were before you had this baby and a rebirth into you as a mom for the first, second, third, fourth time. Each time we go through this, it really is a mini death and a mini rebirth. And that just takes a tremendous amount of energy. So Chiropractic care during this time period can help you adapt to all these different stressors. It can help, of course, with physical things like posture and alignment due to the physical demands on your body. But I really feel like the greater, the greater issue here is that um, chemical and emotional stress. I don't think we talk about that enough. And the fact that chiropractic care, because it works with your entire nervous system, can help balance those aspects as well and really help to facilitate a smoother postpartum recovery. Chiropractic care, um, just as in pregnancy, can be modified to suit an individual's needs after giving birth. Everyone's experience with birth is going to be different, and the way they're going to be comfortable being adjusted after giving birth is going to be different as well. We can do adjustments seated. We can do adjustments standing. We can modify if someone has had a C-section, they're not comfortable laying face down. We can utilize special pillows and special techniques. You want to find a chiropractor who does a variety of different techniques, who has training, um, not only with pregnancy, but with perinatal before and after pregnancy so that they are having um, techniques and tools available to suit your individual needs. And they're not just going to do the same thing. They don't just do the same thing on everyone. So now I'm, we're going to go through each of those categories of stressors, and I'm going to show you before and after pregnancy, how you can work on regulating your own nervous system so that you are maintaining your overall health. One of the most important functional movements that we're doing all day long that it's really important to be able to do pain-free before becoming pregnant is a squat. We squat every time we get on or off of the toilet, every time we get in and out of bed, every time we pick something off, 
up off of the floor. It's really important to be able to do this correctly. And many of us do not know how to do a correct squat. So I'm gonna show you some basic cues without getting too technical. You wanna start with a wide base. So you wanna bring your feet wider than your hips and you can put, point your toes slightly out. This is gonna give you a little bit more space in your squat. What you're gonna do is you wanna keep your chest up. You wanna avoid dumping all of your weight forward when you squat. So I pretend like I'm wearing a necklace, like a beautiful, um, what's it called? The diamond of the ocean or something like the Titanic necklace. You want to keep it on your chest right here where everyone can see it. You don't want to dangle that necklace too far out, right? You want to keep it against the canvas of your chest so it can be admired and enjoyed. So I'm wearing my big dangly necklace in my mind. I'm going to do my squat. I've got my feet nice and wide. I'm going to just sink my hips back behind me as if I'm about to sit in a, an invisible chair, keeping my chest upright. You don't have to go down very far. If this is painful for you, you want to get to the point where it starts to become painful and you want to stay in that pain-free range of motion, slowly working on your mobility over time. You don't just want to push through if it's hurting your knees or your low back. Your squat might start out very, very shallow. You're only coming down a little bit. When you're ready to come back up, you're gonna squeeze your glutes to come up and you're gonna use the power of squeezing those butt cheeks to push you back into an upright position. Keeping the chest up, feet wide. I wanna dip down, sitting in my invisible chair. Eventually, you ought to be able to come all the way down and drop your butt. That's a really advanced version. If you're someone that's been squatting already, maybe you're ready to try this out, but baby steps, right? Squeeze the glutes to come back up. You also want to make sure that your knees are not flaring outwards or tucking inwards. You want to keep your knees facing straight ahead as you complete this squatting motion. If this is really challenging for you or it's super painful, now's the time to seek some help, to see a chiropractor, a personal trainer, a physical therapist, a massage therapist, someone that can help you with your mobility so that by the time you are adding the additional strain of pregnancy, the relaxing hormone that makes all of our joints really loosey-goosey, it also makes things unstable, likely the squat is going to get even harder to perform. So before we have the influence of relaxing on our system, that's the time to build a strong foundation with all of these body functional movements that we're going to be doing day in and day out for the rest of our lives. Something as simple as addressing your fears, your worries, your anxieties about pregnancy, about birth, about motherhood, what better time to do it than now? So I always encourage moms to analyze and assess everything in their environment that is influencing their mindset surrounding pregnancy and birth. This comes down to the people that you surround yourself with, the content that you consume on social media, on TV, books, articles. It also comes down to your care providers, how supportive they are, looking at all those different areas of your life and assessing, is this a community, a tribe of support that feels really good? Now with media and in general, I think we have a tendency to really sensationalize things. If you are someone that watches the news, or again, you're someone who even is flicking through social media, we may see some really negative, really heavy, really stressful things on there. If you're someone that listens to crime podcasts, you're watching only murder, <laughs> um, murder, unsolved murder mysteries or whatever those things are called, true crime. If you're someone that's into that, um, I'm not here to judge you or to knock that, but there's something that we kind of like. I think that's why we listen to that stuff. You feel it in your physiology like, ooh, I'm so creeped out. Well, yeah, you are mirroring the physiology of someone that's actually in that stressful situation. And the goal is to decrease our stress and to increase our time spent it at ease, feeling safe. So if there's something that you are exposing yourself to on a day in day out basis that gives your, your, gives your body a, a perception of non-safety, whether it's real or imagined, maybe maybe I'd encourage you to reevaluate that. I think for a lot of us postpartum when it comes to healing, big areas of concern are how do I heal my core and how do I heal my pelvic floor, especially if you had some tearing. I had some third degree tearing and it took a lot of work to heal my pelvic floor after the fact. So using our breath is the most powerful way that we can start to reconnect our core, helping it come back online. Two things to keep in mind about the core. Our core is not just our abs in front. Our core wraps all the way around. It's 360 degrees. It's everything that helps to stabilize our trunk. Another thing to remember is that our core is connected to the rest of our body. And there's a really intricate relationship between our core, 
our diaphragm, and our pelvic floor. So we went through some breathing exercises in part one of this video series when I talked through breathing exercises during pregnancy. But now that we're into postpartum, the breath is even more important. And it's the number one way that you can start to reconnect your brain to your core, to your pelvic floor, and you can start that healing process. The breath work is also something that you can do easily in those first six weeks. You can do it in the first few days when you are not even leaving your bed yet, whether you're at home or whether you're at the hospital. Breath work is always something that we can work on. So we want to think about that same breathing pattern that we discussed where you're breathing in and you're envisioning your pelvic floor kind of like a trampoline, stretching out and moving down. When you breathe out, everything knits in and everything raises in terms of the pelvic floor. So breathing in and breathing out. So you almost want to think of if you were to do like a Kegel and tighten the muscles of your pelvic floor, if you were trying to basically hold in your pee, that's what you're doing when you're exhaling. When you're inhaling, you're almost trying to do the opposite of that. You want to send the breath all the way down into the muscles of your pelvic floor. You also want to think about making sure that you are expanding your entire rib cage when you breathe, not just breathing into the front of your body, but thinking about breathing into the sides of your body and the back of your body, like you were breathing into a big inner. Chiropractors have a term for something that happens during postpartum. It's called nursing neck. And it's basically this. Does this look familiar if you've ever had a baby? <laughs> You're looking down at your baby all day long and it's putting a tremendous amount of stress on your neck, on your upper back, on your shoulders, on your lower back. It stresses the entire spine. So this is a position that we can't necessarily avoid. I am not going to tell you to stop staring at your baby 24-7 because I was in that position pretty much 24-7 for the last eight months of my life. What we can do is that when we're not holding baby, we can do everything we can to combat that and make sure that we have our posture and our breath work dialed in so that we are not becoming stuck like this and creating a lot of tension patterns and pain patterns that are going to endure past this postpartum period. Here we are in our natural habitat. I'm gonna show you three ways that you can combat that nursing neck. So this first one you can do while you're holding your baby. You can really do this anywhere. This one's super simple. It's a basic stretch that helps us to support the natural curve in our neck. We're meant to have an upward shaped, sort of like a banana shaped curve in our neck. That curve starts to straighten out the more that we're doing that nursing neck thing. So this stretch helps us to reinforce it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our head to the side and we're gonna look up at about a 45 degree angle. So it's gonna look like this. Let me be mindful about how I'm holding my baby. I'm gonna look over my shoulder and up. And I'm bringing my eyes first. I'm looking where I'm going and I'm bringing my head up. You wanna make sure you're doing this on both sides. You can do three or four repetitions. This is actually an exercise that we teach babies to do. Parents can hold toys behind baby at a 45 degree angle. Baby looking over their shoulder and up to the side helps them develop that nice healthy, healthy curve in their neck as well. So this is something that you can do with your baby in tummy time, both on your bellies, looking up and over the shoulder at a 45 degree angle. The second way to help open up the front of our body and to combat nursing neck is to open up and stretch the chest, the pectoral muscles. We're gonna show you how to do a doorway stretch. So you're gonna locate any old doorway will do. What you're gonna do is start with your arm out at a 90 degree angle. We're gonna stretch the pec at three different angles. So starting from this middle angle, you're gonna bring the arm out here, place it against the door frame. You're gonna gently walk your feet forward until you feel a lengthening through the front of your chest. If you'd like, you can lean into it a little bit by turning your body away. Take a couple deep breaths, in and out, helping to stretch out this area. And then when you're ready to come out of the stretch, you're gonna simply back your feet up to take the tension off of the muscle. Part two of this stretch, we worked out at 90 degrees. We're now gonna bring the arm up slightly. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Step ourselves forward lightly. We're gonna feel a slightly different part of this area stretch. We're gonna breathe into it. Ah, feels good. And when we're ready, we're gonna back our feet up, coming out of the stretch. Part three and final part, we're gonna come down slightly, opening up a different part of that pec, the front of the chest. Breathing, step our feet forward until we feel a lengthening. Breathing into that, coming back. The last way we can help to open up the front of the body, support that curve in the neck, and combat that nursing neck is to make a 
t-shirt roll. We're gonna make a neck roll that we're gonna lay on that's gonna reinforce that curve in our neck. This is one that's gonna be harder to do with baby on you, so I would pass baby off for just a couple minutes if you can. You're gonna find a t-shirt. I find a larger t-shirt is a little bit easier. You have a little bit more to work with. You're gonna fold the arms in. So you're gonna fold it into a little rectangle. You can fold it once, fold it twice. Now I've got my little rectangle here and I'm just gonna roll it from one end until I've got this little log. If you want to save yourself a little bit of time and effort, you can put rubber bands on either side of this and that way you can just grab this and it's ready to go. You don't have to re-roll it each time, but it's not necessary. What we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down on our back. So just like during pregnancy and postpartum, it's really important to keep our core engaged, keep our legs together and to move mindfully. So if I'm getting on the floor, I'm laying on my back, I wanna keep in mind that I wanna lay first on my side. I can use that forearm to take pressure off the wrist. I'm going to gently roll myself onto my back. Now, I'm gonna tuck my chin. I'm gonna place the roll underneath my neck. I wanna put it as far down as it'll go until it hits pretty much the, the top of my shoulders and I can't bring it down any farther. And then I'm gonna let my head fall, draping my neck over the roll. You'll know it's in a good position because it should feel good. And it should feel like your neck is sort of rainbowing over the roll. If it's too high up, you're gonna feel like you're looking forward towards your feet. We don't want that. We wanna be looking up towards the ceiling or almost a little bit behind us. So we're really working with that nice arch in the neck. And once you're on the roll comfortably, you've got it in a good place, you're just gonna lay here and breathe. This is a great opportunity to practice that pelvic floor breathing. You can do two birds, one stone, so to speak, so I can breathe into my pelvic floor, draw everything up as I exhale, just take some breaths in this position. You can stay here a minute, three minutes, five minutes, however long you can get. When you're ready to come off the roll, you're gonna tuck your chin, remove the neck roll, you wanna make sure you come to your side first. So I'm gonna roll over to my side. I'm gonna stay down on this elbow to protect my wrist. Use the opposite hand to push myself up. Ah, and then I can take another few deep breaths. Sometimes we might feel a little bit of lightheaded if we're moving down and up quickly. So I can take a minute or two just to just catch my breath once I sit up before I go about the rest of my day or night. Now let's talk about some common aches and pains that new moms tend to deal with and give you some simple strategies to combat that. So the first area that we see really commonly undergo a lot of stress in new moms is the wrists. It's a lot of picking up baby, nursing, awkward positions for your wrists, and already carpal tunnel is really common during pregnancy, so you may be entering the season already with some wrist discomfort. The idea here is that you wanna make sure you're keeping your wrists in a neutral position as often as you can. We wanna avoid having the wrist tilted forward or tilted back more commonly and creating any additional strain on the joint. Anytime you are snuggling with baby, if you're nursing baby, if you're in an awkward position or an uncomfortable position, baby falls asleep. Before you know it, you're sacrificing your body. 20 minutes goes by, an hour goes by, and you're like, oh man, my wrist is killing me. So you wanna set yourself up for success and you wanna always be thinking ahead. Is this a, is this a position where if my baby were to fall asleep, you know, my arm would end up going numb in a half hour? Or is this a position that is a little bit more sustainable? Another way to cope with inflamed and painful wrists is to modify your usage of your wrists. Really commonly when we're getting up from laying down, we might do this awkward angle where our bottom wrist we bend it and then we're pushing ourselves up and that can create a lot of pain. Even if you don't have wrist pain, that sort of bothered my wrist. So you wanna think about substituting your forearms and elbow for the wrist whenever possible. So if I'm trying to push myself up, what I can do is I can come up on my forearm and then it's easier to use this opposite wrist to push myself up. I'm not using all of my body weight at an awkward steep angle using the bottom wrist, if that makes sense. So using forearm whenever possible instead of wrist to protect the wrists. Even if you're being really mindful of your wrist alignment in your day to day, if your wrist is already inflamed, if you did have carpal tunnel during pregnancy, it can be really uncomfortable even if your wrist is in a good position. So in order to bring that inflammation down, a really simple, oh, 
I'm spilling peas and carrots. You could take a closed bag of peas and carrots from the, from the freezer or an ice pack and you can apply some ice to the wrist to get that inflammation down. You can also use a really basic wrist brace. I really, really like this for the early postpartum period. You can find these at CVS or Walmart or buy one online on Amazon. It simply loops through the thumb and it wraps around the wrist. The idea here is just to provide a little stability and even having this on your wrist may be a gentle reminder, hey, be aware of wrist positioning and just a cue to make sure you're not bending the wrist in any awkward position when you're holding baby. Thank you for your time and attention, being open to learning something new. This was part two of our four part video series. Next time we're talking about chiropractic for kids and babies. I'm so excited to share about that with you. In the meantime, feel free to find us on social media at Pregnancy Tribe or write those questions you have down because part four, we're gonna do a video Q&A for any questions on anything that we've covered so far. I'll see you next time.